Okay, hands up. Who's a bit of a saddo that likes looking at their ride data for hours? Well, there's a very clever Chinese company that's made doing exactly that a whole lot cheaper. Meet the IGS-60 from a company called IGP Sport. My first impression is that it's a bit of a Garmin 510 looky-likey, which suggests it's aimed at the same target audience. This, I think, is a bit unfortunate, as potential buyers will inevitably compare the two, even though they're at very different price points. While it records all of the important metrics such as speed, cadence, heart rate and position, it doesn't have many of the 510's little extras, such as touchscreen, virtual partner or weather reports. Now for some, this lack of whistles and bells is an absolute deal breaker, but for others, its straightforwardness may actually be an advantage. The unit was shipped to me direct from IGP Sport in China. In the box was the IGS-60 itself, a couple of mounting kits and a micro USB charging lead. I was also sent the optional heart rate sensor and the C60 cadence sensor. What it didn't have was any kind of user manual. For this, I had to visit their website and download the PDF. For the sake of a full disclosure, I was sent this little lot for the purposes of this review, but they're not paying me to make this film. First off, the IGS-60 claims to have a 20 hour battery life, which is plenty of time for even the longest ride. To charge it, you plug one end of the supplied lead into a suitable USB charger, I'm using my Garmin one, and the other into the back of the unit. This should take about an hour, and once charged, you can switch it on using a short press on the left hand button. Setting up the IGS-60 is, I have to say, a little clunky. Not having a touchscreen means you have to do everything using the three buttons on the front of the unit. To toggle between the ride mode and the menu mode, you have to briefly press the left hand button. Once in menu mode, you can use the right button to scroll through the various menu items and the middle button to enter and change the options within that item. The first thing I wanted to do was pair the optional heart rate and cadence sensors. So to do this, I select the sensor item and press the middle button for OK. I then click OK a second time to start the IGS-60 searching. It had no problem detecting the heart rate sensor, but try as I might, it just would not pair with the cadence sensor. This actually turned out to be user error on my part. I was expecting the sensor to be triggered by a magnet when it actually uses an accelerometer. It's all pretty clever stuff, but I had to email IGP Sport to get their help. The IGS-60 is also ANT Plus compatible, so if you already have third-party sensors, they will pair and work just as well. The IGS-60 also has Bluetooth connectivity, but again, I could not get it to connect to my iPhone. At present, as far as I'm aware, the Bluetooth is designed for use with their free app, which is only available in the Chinese language version. I have been reliably informed though that an English version will be available very soon. Next, I wanted to set up the various data screens. This is done in the ride mode item. You can have up to five data screens with up to 10 assignable fields on each. I managed to set mine up to mirror the data I have on my Garmin. Although for me, one of my most important metrics, the percentage of my maximum heart rate, was missing. Instead, it has something called HRM zone, which to be honest, made little sense as the number appeared to express some kind of fraction. One of my little things is using metric. I like kilometers and Celsius, so fortunately for me, the IGS-60 used this system right out of the box. But for those of you who like good old miles and Fahrenheit, changing it is very easy. Once you're happy with the initial setup, you can add extra ride modes. This is useful if you want a particular set of data for your training rides and a different set when you're actually racing. 
Similarly, you can also set up different bike profiles if you have more than one bike. Once everything was set up and the sensors connected, I took it out for a ride. It's so closely based on the Garmin 510, I didn't even need to change my mount. I rode a course that I know well, so was able to assess its accuracy, and I have to say that it worked fantastically. I was particularly impressed with the speed and the accuracy of the gradient measurement. I've recently noticed that on my 510, the slower I ride up a climb, and I already ride pretty slow, the steeper it says it is. The IGS-60 doesn't appear to suffer from this rather annoying little foible. The IGS-60 also claims to have a navigation feature. This is accessed by pressing the right hand button and scrolling through the open data pages and the altitude profile. Just as with the 510, it displays a very basic route. These can be stored and if you want, you can ride them again. While I was riding, the screen was clear and easy to read, even in what passes for bright sunlight here in the UK. But once I finished my ride, it was a little confusing working out which button to press to stop the unit recording. As we all know, recording our rides is only half the story. We now have to share it with the world, and my own particular platform is Strava. Now because the IGS-60 does not connect to my phone directly, I have to go back to the old fashioned way and actually plug it into my laptop and upload the file direct to Strava. It's a bit of a pain, but once it's actually on Strava, the data looks exactly the same. Again, this lack of Bluetooth connectivity is potentially a big disadvantage, but it's worth bearing in mind that many of the Garmin computers also lack Bluetooth and need to be hardwired to a computer to upload their data. All in all, I thought the IGS-60 worked well. Once set up, the data was accurate and easy to read, and I was able to send it to Strava, which at the end of the day is all that any of us cyclists want to do. Granted, it's not the most elegant or fully featured cycling computer, but sometimes less, as they say, is more. My main grumble, though, was the lack of a user manual. The one I downloaded from the website was fairly basic and gave me no instructions on how to use the slightly more advanced features such as the navigation. In conclusion, if you're looking for a GPS cycling computer that's accurate and fairly easy to use, then the IGS-60 is an extremely good option. On the other hand, if you like your labels and top brands, you'll probably want to stick with your Garmin, even though it will cost you a lot more and do pretty much exactly the same thing. So there we go. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Please like and share and check out some of my other films.